we acknowledge that the land where the Microsoft campus is situated was traditionally occupied by the Sammamish, the Duwamish, the Snoqualmie, the Suquamish, the Muckleshoot, the Snohomish, the Tulalip, and other Coast Salish peoples since time immemorial. A people who are still here, continuing to honor and bring to light their ancient heritage. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you happen to be. Welcome to Microsoft Build, the event centered on learning, connecting, and coding with Microsoft. I'm Rick Kloss. I lead a team of cloud advocates from around the world. For those of you using descriptive audio, I'm a 40-year-old white male that is wearing my signature green Tilly hat, an orange and black rugby jersey, some blue jeans, and I'm standing in front of a massive LED wall that changes all the time. And I'm Allison Wines, Program Manager in our Developer Tools Division. I'm a white and Asian woman with straight brown hair. I'm wearing a black sleeveless shirt and my favorite, white pink sneakers, for those of you who might not be able to see me. We're coming to you from the Microsoft Studios in Redmond, Washington. And we are so excited to be here with all of you, our global community of developers, coders, tech evangelists, students, and innovators. Now, the next two days here at Microsoft Build are gonna be jam-packed with the latest announcements and innovations at the forefront of modern application development. From increasing developer velocity to building the next generation of collaborative apps for hybrid work. Oh, I can't wait. We're also going to be joined by our third co-host, Jamie Singleton, in just a few moments. Let's go ahead and dive in. Learn, connect, code. You're gonna hear these words all Microsoft build long, and they touch on what we're all about, especially as the global pandemic continues to transform, well, pretty much everything. Let's break it down. That first part, learn. At Microsoft Build, there are so many ways to continue your learning journey. Through certifications, the Cloud Skills Challenge, Learn Live sessions, you name it. This way, you are skilled and ready to tackle the transformations coming your way. Next up is Connect, and this is the perfect place to start connecting and getting the most of your Microsoft Build community. You can do that in the Connection Zone. That's where you can network with other attendees, link up with people in your geographic region, and for the first time ever at Microsoft Build, you can also sign up for table topics and product roundtable sessions. Oh, exciting stuff. And that third part, code. I mean, that's all something we're very familiar with, right, Rick? <laughs> Throughout the event, you'll get the chance to expand your toolbox, learn from peers and experts, as well as access exclusive content from our featured partners. But as you're taking all of this in, don't forget to give yourself a break, as in hydrate, stretch, or just step away from the screen. Rick, Jamie, and I will be right here whenever you're ready to dive back in. Plus keynotes, technical sessions, and breakout sessions will be available for viewing on demand until next year's build. Now, this around here is known as the digital venue, as the thing you're watching right now. Think of it as your home base. You know what, let's go and get to know it a little bit better. It's a time for a little tiny segment that we are calling the download. Now, we're gonna talk about how you're gonna be accessing all the fantastic features and sessions at Microsoft Bill. But first I wanna go off and do a little bit of social stuff just to kind of get you oriented here by going and looking at my build profile. So you can see here, I'm at 100% complete. I've already gone in, uploaded a picture, thrown in a bit of a bio. Uh, I've got some major, so some, some little contact details there for LinkedIn Ooh. in case you wanna expand your network. All that sort of stuff happens to be here on the main page after you register. You know, Rick, you seem like a pretty cool person. Is is there any way I could connect with you during the event, like through this profile? Well, if, if you want to expand your professional network, LinkedIn's definitely the way that you're going to be doing it, but you have to turn on the checkbox right here that says, make my build profile visible in the Microsoft build directory. 
Ah, okay, got it. I did that, so yep. folks can connect with me if they want to. You got it. So that's the easiest way to go off and get your yourself visible inside the attendee directory. But the real meat and potatoes of how this all works is known as the session scheduler. Ah, so yes. here is where you're going to find all that phenomenal content, over 300 and some odd sessions that are Ooh. available. But you're, don't worry, because you can filter this down by doing some filtering of results of session types, start times, and things like that. But you know, one of my favorite ways of filtering is by looking for speakers I want to go off and see. Absolutely. How about uh, Scott Hanselman as an example? Oh, yes. I can't believe you don't have that added to your schedule already. <laughs> well, uh, Scott Hanselman, and then we can see, up oh, there he is there inside of this one session is taking place tomorrow. Uh, I can go ahead and say add to schedule, and it adds it into my schedule for being able to uh, pull up and take a look at in the future, and I've got, I'm going to know where it's at. And then finally, your schedule is available at all times to you by the top right-hand corner, being able to look and find your schedule, see where your gaps are, and even synchronize it with your own calendar. Wow, you know, I love that because I have a, a, a session today that I really <laughs> am looking forward to, but it's in my personal calendar, not okay. in that one. But right now, it's time to introduce the third member of our hosting squad, Jamie Singleton, who apparently found a couple of 3D printers. Jamie, please tell us more. Hi, Rick. Hi, Allison. And hi, everybody joining us around the world online. I'm Jamie Singleton, a program manager at Microsoft for your .NET community. For those using descriptive audio, I'm a female descendant of the Chumash tribe with long curly brown hair and wearing a black pantsuit with white floral flowers on it. And I'm standing in front of several 3D printing machines. Like Allison mentioned, I'm here in the 3D Printing Hub because, well, we want to make all of your 3D printing realities a dream come true. Upload a file of an object to aka.ms slash 3D build, and I'm here with some amazing STEM advocates who will help bring those 3D printing objects to reality. Um, because not everybody has a 3D printing machine, but we certainly do. Just a friendly reminder, we're not able to print all of the items that come through, but definitely submit them and we'll see what we can do as we'll be printing all event long. Back over to you, Allison and Rick. Now, throughout the show, we want to hear from you. Since hybrid work is such a big focus at Microsoft Build, we really want to know, how have you hacked your work from home setup? Did you perhaps rig a Roomba to bring you coffee, upgrade your home office six times, Tweet your home hacks with the hashtag, hashtag MSBuild, and we'll be checking in with you on social media in a segment we're calling The Pulse. Now, I'm going to go off and, and, and kick this one off nice and easy. This is an easy one to go for. Look at this one. Isn't that little baby a sweetie Aww. from Matt Batterby? Uh, someone is waiting to patiently go off and watch the keynote with Satya Nadella coming up. Don't worry. It's coming. But uh, that's just a little fun baby picture. Starting them young. I, I love know, right? it. You know, Pablo here. I love your setup. I love all the reminders. Really great best practices for Bill. He's got a setup ready. Got that hydration. I would love a chai if anyone wants to bring that to me. <laughs> nice. um, the Imagine Cup's going to be excellent so take a take a note from pablo here and and be sure to tune into that i'm so excited to see who wins nice just a quick little shout out here to may who has gone ahead and got the most funky keyboard that i've seen in my life uh, as well as a really stoking looking pair of uh, kitty cat earphones let's listen to oh, the two love so it. good stuff keep them coming we're going to be looking at it at uh hashtag ms build so you know what Let's get a little bit nostalgic here. Our, our very first Microsoft build was back in 2011. And you know what? We're curious. How many Microsoft builds have you been to? In fact, how many Microsoft dev conferences in general have you been to, period? Um, I mean, PDC was technically in 1993, right? So everyone's got to remember that one. Not <laughs> tell, me. I was one. <laughs> tell, us, tell us at onair at Microsoft.com. Shoot us a quick email. Let us know what you're saying and what, where you've been. And you never know. You might actually show up. Uh, here at Microsoft Build. Oh, I love that. So what's your favorite Microsoft Build memory from years past, Rick? Well, for me, it's actually more of a behind the scenes thing. Back in 2012, Build was here on campus and it was you know, Pacific Northwest and rainy. Uh, we actually had to drape additional plastic over top of the server rack in the back uh, to make sure that none of the demo systems actually got wet. So you wow. didn't see that out front, but that's just definitely very memorable for me. <gasps> 
that's wild. Uh, <laughs> no stories like that from me, that's for sure. Yeah, so switching gears here, partners play a critical role in the solution that we'll be talking about here at Microsoft Build. From breakout sessions to the connection zone, and right here in the studio, you're gonna get partner insights in real world cases that are specific to your projects and interests across the cloud, desktop, mobile, and web development. We've assembled a diverse set of partners and startups for Microsoft Build, each sharing some of their most important technical updates with you right here. Ah, oh, that's right. Let's look at a few examples right now. Intel will talk about securing your code with Azure Confidential Computing and Intel SGX. We'll dive into spatial AI and computer vision and show you how to take advantage of the Windows subsystem for Linux with our very own Scott Hanselman. Launch Darkly will share how developers use feature flags to scale uh, at scale to ship faster and reduce risk. And we'll also show you how to set up processes with GitHub and Microsoft Teams to minimize the technical debt that's associated with feature flags. Plus, Confluent will help you build real-time event-driven apps on Azure with Confluent Managed Apache Kafka, direct from the makers of Apache Kafka. And stay right here with us in between these sessions for some live interviews. But if you miss anything, don't worry. All this great content is going to be available on demand in the Featured Partner Showcase. Yes. And our Featured Partner Showcase is also where you'll find exclusive demos, SDKs, code, trial software, special offers, and even swag from our partners and featured startups. Just click Featured Partners at the top of this page to check those out throughout the show. Whatever your interest, our Featured Partner Showcase has the tools and resources to help. Now, let's take a look at what we have coming up. It's going to be a very packed day. We're kicking things off in a big way with a keynote from CEO Satya Nadella. He's going to be talking about things we're focusing on at Microsoft Build, including increasing developer velocity, building intelligent cloud native applications, and of course, my favorite, hybrid work. Oh, exactly right. That's at 9 a.m. sharp. And after that, it's a technical session with Amanda Silver, Donovan Brown, and Julie Strauss on increasing developer velocity with Microsoft's end-to-end -end platform so that any dev can be empowered to build cloud-based apps. Plus, we'll check in with those STEM students who are printing up your 3D printer submissions. Now, at 10.30 a.m. Pacific, we're going to learn how to harness the power of data in your applications with Azure in a technical session led by some Microsoft pros. And still to come, interviews and demos with Microsoft experts like Tyler Adams from our Mixed Reality team. And Corporate Vice President of Azure Data, Rohan Kumar, spoke with our colleague Seth Juarez for a little wrap with Rohan. That's going to be great. They're talking about what's new with Azure SQL and Cosmos DB, among other hot topics. Can't wait to see that. Now, I really hope that Seth isn't going to be actually wrapping, but you know what? At 11.15, we're going to get a sneak peek into the future of modern application development in a technical session about building cloud-native applications that run anywhere. We're going to have Jeff Holland and Beck Lyons and Gabe Monroy. who are going to be showing us how to empower developers to innovate rapidly with turnkey services. Plus, I think Jeff's going to be coming by for an interview with Jamie. So like many of us have experienced over the past year, hybrid work is here to stay. Hear how Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Graph, and Windows are empowering next-gen productivity in our new work normal in a session on building collaborative apps for the hybrid workplace at 12 o'clock sharp Pacific. Now you can find all of these sessions in your session scheduler at the very top of the screen. In, just... in a few full moments, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella takes the stage to deliver his keynote address. You don't want to miss it. We're going to be right back after all of that in a section that we're going to be calling The Feed. Can't wait. This is Microsoft. This is day one of Microsoft Build. Enjoy. <laughs>
A digital wave is transforming the world. Across every continent, country, economy, and industry. A better world. Thanks to developers. Thanks to you. To you. The people who help bridge the digital and physical. Through the isolation of the pandemic. You forged new applications, capabilities, and experiences and became digital first responders. To the first responders, you overcame enormous constraints. Working together as a community, you made us more resilient, connected, inspired, productive, educated, joyful, and healthy. Now developers are building our way forward. As the digital wave is accelerating, an opportunity is growing. To make businesses more competitive. Governments more responsive. Education more accessible. All to keep our world thriving. You are amplifying human ingenuity. At school. In the lab. Even in outer space. Everywhere. Being a developer is possible for anyone who wishes to shape the future. That's our vision. To empower developers. To empower you. To empower the world. Good morning and welcome to Build. It's great to be together. There is no doubt it's been a challenging year. The world continues to confront a public health and an economic crisis, persistent issues of racial injustice and inequity, and the damaging effects of climate change. These crises will require long-term commitment and real work from all of us. And this conference is about the role, the responsibility, and the opportunity of this community in shaping what comes next. Over the past year, you have shown what is possible when you come together and bring together the atoms of the real world with the bits of the virtual world. You've helped society overcome these enormous challenges while at the same time overcoming the challenges of your own circumstances. So I want to say a big thank you. You've acted as digital first responders in a moment when we needed you the most helping those on the front lines deliver critical care and rapidly develop vaccines. You've helped businesses remain resilient, ensuring they were able to quickly adapt and stay open when storefronts closed. And you helped us reimagine where humanity can go and what we can do transcending time and even space. And it's just the beginning. Just think about the world in 2030. Tech as a percentage of total GDP will double from 5 to 10%. But the most notable thing is what will happen to the other 90%. Digital transformation that was projected to happen over the next 10 years is happening today. As computing becomes embedded in every aspect of our lives, there will no longer be such a thing as the tech sector. The world will be transformed through tech intensity at scale. Every organization will not only need to adopt the latest technology, but more importantly, build their own unique digital technology or be left behind. We are seeing a surge of developers across industries and geographies. Over the past two years, the number of developers at non-tech companies has grown faster than at tech companies. Industries hiring developers most rapidly include agriculture, consumer goods, energy, finance, and wellness. To share just one example, in the automotive industry, there were more software engineers than mechanical engineers hired over the last year. And we are seeing growth in every region, Nigeria, Hong Kong, Saudi Arabia, Bangladesh, and Egypt, topped the list of new contributors to GitHub in 2020. And over the past 12 months, the percentage of developer job postings that were remote increased 8x year over year. In a digital first company, the developer workflow influences how the entire company works. Fusion teams of pro developers and domain experts will integrate all functions and all disciplines. 
For example, students and teachers, data analysts and scientists have all seen rapid growth on GitHub. And of course, we are experiencing massive technological and societal shifts, which will create new and lasting opportunity for all of you. As the physical and digital worlds converge, every organization, small or large, in every industry, in every country, will require more ubiquitous and decentralized compute power. Large AI models are becoming platforms creating ambient intelligence around us. The balance between consumption and creation is changing. More and more people are creating something new and magical every day. And they're growing communities who want to discover, explore, and build on their creations. We need a virtuous cycle between content consumption and commerce driven by communities for everything we build. And we'll need to unlock the economic opportunity and productivity to prepare every person for the task at hand and for the jobs of the future. And finally, we will need trust by design. The design and development process itself must prioritize privacy, cybersecurity, digital safety, and responsible AI across everything we do. No one will want technology that rapidly scales but breaks the world around us. We want to empower you to seize these opportunities and build what comes next. Our ambition is to be the platform for platform creators. This conference is not about setting new rules or constraints that dictate how or what you should build. It's not even about celebrating our own innovation. It's about enabling your innovation and creating new opportunities for you. We want to help you help the world. That's at the core of our mission. Over the next two days, you will see how we are investing across the entire tech stack to make creating easier for all of you. This morning, we're announcing more than 100 new services and important updates to help you innovate. We've organized build around several core themes this year. And let me share just a snapshot of what you're going to see over the next two days. It starts with our end-to-end -end developer tool chain. We're a company built by developers for developers first. From GitHub to Visual Studio, we provide the most comprehensive tool chain and services for every developer, every app, and every platform. So you can rapidly go from idea to code and code to cloud. And it's all about that developer velocity. We want to give you the tools to innovate as fast as you want to go. And with Power Platform, we are helping you scale and amplify your work so that you can collaborate across these fusion teams and build applications together. You'll hear from Amanda Silva and Donovan Brown how Toyota is bringing together fusion teams of pro developers and domain experts, as well as structured and unstructured data to build a mission-critical internal vehicle delivery app. And Julie Strauss will show you how we are bringing the world's most powerful language model, GPT-3, to Power Platform. If you can describe what you want to do in natural language, GPT-3 will generate a list of the most relevant formula for you to choose from. The code writes itself. The next theme is building new intelligent apps by harnessing the power of data and AI. This is so important. Every developer now has the opportunity and responsibility to make organizations sovereign in terms of their own data being used to benefit their own organization. The opportunity is clear. The next generation of applications will not be reactive, but proactive because of their ability to harness the power of data to drive that next level of intelligence. From hyperscale SQL and Postgres SQL, Cosmos DB to Synapse and Synapse Link and Purview, Azure is the only cloud with limitless data and analytics and data governance capabilities. And in AI, we offer the most comprehensive portfolio of tools and frameworks for you to build these intelligent apps responsibly. You see so many customers applying this data and AI capabilities today. Twitter is using our speech services to generate captions for their live audio conversations on Twitter Spaces, making it a platform more accessible. And Walmart.com is using Cosmos DB to power their e-commerce transactions over holidays, handling billions of requests daily and providing millions of the customers with items they wanted when they needed them. Cosmos DB has become the go-to database to power the world's most demanding mission-critical applications. New capabilities boost performance by more than 300% for these read-heavy workloads. And Rohan Kumar will share updates for Cosmos DB, Azure SQL, and our OSS databases that we are making to help you build and modernize high-performance apps at any scale. 
Eric Boyd will talk about our new initiative with PyTorch to introduce PyTorch Enterprise on Azure, providing a more reliable production experience for organizations using PyTorch for their data science work. No other cloud is doing this today. And Kevin Scott will talk about the groundbreaking work we're doing with OpenAI on large scale models. Now let's talk about cloud native apps. The world's not getting simpler. Technologies are multiplying. There's an increasing variety of hardware, silicon, deployment models. Some will argue that the cost of supporting multi-cloud is pretty prohibitive. Add the edge to that and it becomes exponentially more complex. And we are making all of this simpler to help you build and create from anywhere. The apps of the future will be cloud native and you should be able to run them anywhere across on-premise, edge, and multi-cloud. Today, we're excited to announce that Azure Application Services will now be able to run on Kubernetes and anywhere with Azure Arc. This means you can now run your favorite Azure application services on-premise, on the edge, or other clouds. You will hear more on this from Gabe Monroy. And with AKS and Azure Stack HCI, you can now build consistent applications across Azure and hybrid. Deploying AKS on Azure Stack HCI just takes a few clicks. Now to the future of work. Hybrid work perhaps represents the biggest shift on how we work in our generation. It'll be complex, there's no standard, it'll require a new operating model designed around new ways people work, the places they inhabit, both digital and physical, as well as changes to processes across every business function. That's why we built Teams as that organizing layer for all the ways people work, learn, and collaborate. Teams now has 145 million daily active users, almost double the number a year ago, it's the only solution that brings together meetings, calls, chat, document collaboration, and workflow in a single integrated user experience. And it enables you to bring collaboration to the forefront of app design, as Jeff Tipa will show you. One of the things I'm most excited about is how, with Teams and Office, we're enabling a new category of cross-device collaborative applications. Just like Win32 defined a new era of apps, and web apps and mobile apps did the same, this new generation of cross-device collaborative applications will be transformational first-class platform opportunity for you. For example, we'll show you how our partner ServiceNow built a collaborative app for incident response using Teams as the UI, the Microsoft Graph to connect with the right people in the organization, and a bot to alert them to join a conference call when required. And we're going even further, adding fluid components to Teams and Office, helping you integrate your apps into critical endpoints like Teams meetings, delivering a unified development model for message extensions across Teams and Outlook, and making Teams app development experience easier with improved developer tools and a new developer portal. When you step back, it's clear that as every company becomes a digital company, the largest developer opportunity is building industry-specific business process SaaS applications. Charles Lamana will talk about how to build these next generation cloud-native SaaS apps that compose on top of other clouds and components. These SaaS apps will embrace high-level platform services, embed low-code and workflow platforms, and reuse applications as services. This is how you can maximize your value creation opportunity. Justin Graham will show you how a fantastic demo of Finastra is using our financial services cloud with Teams, Power Platform, and Azure as their core platform to accelerate time to development of a new application. And we see other ISVs across industries embracing this opportunity too in order to unlock the next generation industry SaaS opportunity. Finally, as the virtual and physical worlds converge, the metaverse, made up of digital twins, simulated environments, and mixed reality, is emerging as a first-class platform. With the metaverse, the entire world becomes your app canvas. With Azure Digital Twins, you can model any asset or place with Azure IoT and keep the digital twin live and up-to-date. Synapse tracks the history of digital twins and finds insights to predict future states. And with Azure, you can build autonomous systems that continually learn and improve. Power Platform enables domain experts to expand on and interact with digital twin data using low-code, no-code solutions. And Mesh and HoloLens brings real-time collaboration. 
Sam George will share one of my favorite examples of how Anheuser-Busch InBev has used our Metaverse stack to track every bottle from the wheat field through the manufacturing and distribution processes. They've created this complete digital twin of their breweries and supply chain, as you can see here. The digital twin is synchronized with their physical brewery. It understands these complex relationships between equipment and natural ingredients. It enables the brewmasters to make adjustments based on dynamic conditions. It maintains uptime on many machines required during the packaging process. It tracks the entire supply chain to reduce emissions. Deep reinforcement learning works with digital twins to help packing line operators detect and automatically compensate for bottlenecks. They even use mixed reality with their digital twin for remote assistance. Across all the opportunities I've highlighted today, Windows is implicit. It's never been more important. Windows 10 is used by more than 1.3 billion people to work, learn, connect, and play. And it all starts with Windows as a dev box. Windows brings together all your developer and collaboration tools in one place. It lets you choose the hardware you want, works with Linux and Windows environments as one, and has a modern terminal. And soon we will share one of the most significant updates of Windows of the past decade to unlock greater economic opportunity for developers and creators. I've been self-hosting it over the past several months, and I'm incredibly excited about the next generation of Windows. Our promise to you is this. We will create more opportunity for every Windows developer today and welcome every creator who is looking for the most innovative, new, open platform to build and distribute and monetize applications. We look forward to sharing more very soon. So that's a preview of what we will show you over the next two days. We're at a pivotal moment. Development teams are changing, workflows are changing, app models are changing, apps themselves are changing. They will all become multi-cloud, multi-edge, as well as multi-sense and multi-device. They'll be infused with AI. Devices will work harmoniously together to support and put people at the center of these experiences. And most importantly, they will address some of our biggest opportunities. You are the ones doing the hard work to shape this new reality, and we are here to help. Everything we will show you is designed to empower you and empower the world. I can't wait to see what you create. Thank you so much, and have a great rest of build. Hello again, it's Allison Wines, along with Rick Claus, back with more from day one of Microsoft Build. Also joining us is Jamie Singleton. <laughs> you know, things are ramping up. We just all watched Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella kick things off with his keynote address. It focused on things that we're going to be hearing about throughout the rest of the event, including increasing developer velocity, intelligent apps, and so much more. There's, there's an awful lot to break down for what we just saw, but it sounds like it's time for the section that we're calling the feed. All right, so in this section, we're going to ask everybody here about what they took away from Satya's keynote. Um, what about you, Jamie? Do you have anything that kind of stood out for you from that one? Yeah, I noticed the quick mention of the cloud native apps, uh, where you can essentially um, put Azure app services on top of Kubernetes so that you can build your apps anywhere. Yes. Wow. So that was pretty impressive. Now I'm I, excited to learn more. I, I think you've actually got an interview with some people coming up about that particular topic later on, don't you? I do. I actually have an interview with Jeff Holland later, and so we'll definitely dive into some more details about the cl cloud native apps. Nice. Well, you know what? For me, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the... To the thing that I found really interesting, which was actually the talking about the digital twins, both because it's cool technology, but also because it's going to be uh, about uh, how we've created digital twins with uh, Anheuser uh, InBev, Anheuser-Busch, to be able to go off and make beer, link the ingredients, the manufacturing process to distribution, how it's all there in both the physical world and inside of the digital world as well. 
You know, I think my partner is going to want to have a word with you. Our homebrew setup <laughs> certainly needs an upgrade. Uh, we might have to find more space in our house, though. <laughs> Personally, for me, I mean, I'm in developer division. I'm definitely a little biased. But I love hearing about, you know, increasing developer velocity. That's what I spend my nights over. And I really love how we're bringing together Azure and GitHub and, you know, all our products, uh, like the Visual Studio family, to really help any developer, you mm -hmm. know, accelerate. And as we heard, the need for developers is growing so rapidly. Right, right. They were talking about how it's basically growing faster in non-technical uh, industries, faster than inside the technical industries as well, which is kind of cool. Um, that actually brings up an interview that I've got coming up a little later on with uh, Charles Lemans, where we're going to be talking about the low-code, no-code capabilities, oh. the development and working of, of fusion teams, working with professional developers and, and different uh, industry experts across our um, different types of clouds that we have as far as uh, architectures that we've created. So very cool stuff coming up a little bit later on. Yeah, oh, I can't wait for that interview. I, I think you're going to rock it, Rick. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited for all of the interviews that we have coming up. Uh, there's definitely a few more available to us. Do you have any interviews, Allison? I'm going to be talking about mixed reality, so you should definitely tune in for that one with the virtual twins. Amazing. Um, well, what did all of you think? Tell us the most influential thing you heard Satya say in today's keynote by dropping us a line at onair at microsoft.com. Hey, you might even end up in the show. We can't wait to hear what everyone has thought of Satya's keynote. And you know what? Let's talk about some things that are cool right here inside this digital venue. Yeah, like the student zone. <laughs> We're all lifelong learners. So by students, we also mean recent grads and career changers who are new to the tech world. It's a great resource to kickstart your career. And Rick, Jamie, and myself, we've all been students at some point. honestly, still are. When did you know that you wanted a career in tech? What was your like aha moment, Rick? <laughs> well, for me, it was actually uh, my father, who was a professor of, elect of electrical engineering, bringing home the first computer that the family was going to use. He built it from parts. It was a Sinclair ZX81. And I remember having to program games from the back of magazines into that 1K of RAM to be able to play them and then reprogram them the next day to play them the next day. I, I don't mean to make you feel any sort of way here, Rick, but I literally don't know that brand new. <laughs> uh, it's a little, I, I'm sure it was a great computer. It was just not the computer I learned on. <laughs> Me neither, actually. Okay, so let's get to you then, Jamie. What what was your aha moment? What's your origins? Manager worked my way to community manager, and now I'm here, program manager at Microsoft. So it's oh, been a wild ride. I love that. Just so much initiative taken there. You you really forged a path for yourself. <laughs> Thanks, oh. MySpace, Tom. Yeah, I know. love it. <laughs> now, Allison, you don't get to have uh, an out here. You get oh. to also share what your origin story was. How did you get involved? <laughs> well, originally I was supposed to go to med school. That's what I was studying in okay. college. Uh, clearly it worked out. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I, I actually took a intro to computer science class as a part of my degree requirement, and I loved it. It was probably the hardest thing I've done. It was completely brand new for me, but I love the challenge of being able to sit in my dorm room and like solve these really cool problem sets. And there's nothing like the feeling of your code compiling and working at mm -hmm. 2 a.m. I'm sure a lot of people tuning in know that feeling. Um, and I've kind of been chasing that ever since. Uh, here I am now. I interned uh, here at Microsoft in developer division. Um, nice. And they, they welcomed me back and I'll be here for Six years this nice. summer. Uh, it's been an incredible ride. I love it so much. Nice. I mean, it's kind of interesting how we're all coming from these different diverse backgrounds. I mean, I literally sat down in front of a computer, jiggled the cable to get the printer to work. Uh, and that's kind of how I got my first start and my first job inside the IT world. And, Aww. you know, there's, there's different stories. And I love to hear them coming from everybody from all these different
Bengals for what they bring into the technology community. Yeah. But, you know, you can find out more about what's going on. And if you also have a, a different, diverse background coming into the world of technology, you should definitely check out the Student Zone uh, by first going over and clicking on the Learning Zone, just up above there, uh, and then take a look at uh, the Student Zone. You can learn about Azure, GitHub, C Sharp, Python, and so much more. Just go ahead and drop in on some sessions that are gonna be led by some Microsoft employees and also even some special guests too. There is so much still ahead on day one of Microsoft Build. Here on this screen, you can catch a technical session on increasing developer velocity with Microsoft's end-to-end -end platform. But also be sure to explore other sessions that are happening concurrently. These include harnessing the power of data in your applications with Azure, sessions on building cloud-native applications that run anywhere, the next generation of collaborative apps for hybrid work, and building differentiated SaaS apps with the Microsoft Cloud. All of these can be found in the session scheduler located above. And if you can't get to these in real time, don't worry about it. They'll be made available for viewing on demand later. Just be sure to say it all to your backpack because it's really all about making the Microsoft build experience one that works for you. Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about teams that are focused on building the next generation of digital solutions to get the job done and developing securely for the cloud so that you can unleash your creativity, innovation and ingenuity to serve your users and your business. I'm so delighted to welcome you to build. Let's get started. How do customers with a centralized database add the trust and transparency that blockchain offers without building a